The best money you can spend is on the workshop manual for your car, right? So um, here is the Suzuki SX4 workshop manual. And uh, at one section, under engine uh, diagnostic information, uh, it actually provides you with a number of uh, oscilloscope traces in order to assist you in troubleshooting an issue, right? So there is no issue with my car at the moment here, guys, but I'm kind of intrigued by the fuel injectors at the moment, and I thought I'd get a look at it with my new hand tech scope, the, uh, the injector trace that is. So uh, the manual doesn't leave you guessing. It actually tells you this is a single channel trace on this particular instance, but it tells you the, uh, the voltage settings, so 20 volts per division, and a time base of one millisecond per division. And if you look at this trace here, it actually makes sense. So why such a why such a high setting on the uh, um, on the uh, y-axis, the voltage uh, uh, scaling, because of the inductive spike that you'll get from um, uh, injector waveform, right? I think I mentioned that before here, guys. And you can actually see here. Um, this is 20 volts per division. I hope the camera's picking it up decently. But this spike actually goes, well, let's count it, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120 volts. Is that right? 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 100, yeah, up to like 120 volts. So, um, in fact, you can see here, there's the trigger setting, both the... Uh, uh, both settings for the trigger and actually that's 48 volts at that point right there. So I've mentioned it to you before. Uh, you want to be careful with these scopes because um, uh, 30 volts uh, maximum input voltage. Is that peak to peak? Is that um, absolute? I don't know. But the uh, uh, brochure leaves you guessing. So I'm going to use my uh, uh, 20 to 1 attenuator in this case because uh, I don't want to blow up the scope. It's not worth a fortune, but it's worth money to me, and why would you want to damage your uh, tooling if you can avoid it? Here's the uh, the fuel rail on the SX4, and what you want to do is take a look at the wiring, and no matter what your car is, assuming that it's a se sequential uh, injection system, uh, you'll see they'll be, a com they'll be color coded. So in my particular case, all of the injectors actually have this uh, black and red. So it's pretty safe to assume almost all injectors are actually uh, ground switched. In the case of the SX4, it is ground switched. So this black and red is common to all the injectors. So it makes sense that this side here is going to be the ground switch side. It's pretty easy to figure out even if you don't have a wiring diagram. These are the four injectors shown here, guys. Although it doesn't show you the color for the uh, battery uh, positive, the supply side of the line. It does actually show you the color coding on the other side. And uh, in the case of injector number one, it is in fact blue and yellow. I guess it makes sense at this point to see, this is where the switching inside the ECM is actually done. This is the ECM. This is all, basically all the sensors and actuators on the car here, guys. And you can see in the case of the four injectors, there is drivers inside the ECM for each one. Positive on one side and the ground is supplied on the other in order to energize the coil, lift the pintle, when the ground is lifted, the pintle will drop. So I um, don't want to over explain guys, but there is some guys who watch the videos, obviously like myself, they're amateurs and some of this stuff is new to them, right? So again, there is just channel one, um, actually uh, back probed onto the ground side um, of uh, injector number one. So, and uh, the ground is actually just on the battery ground itself, right? The battery negative. You guys, cause, again, because some of the guys are asking, uh, channel 1 is set for uh, 20 volts per division on the voltage scaling there. Go to the uh, channel settings here. Uh, make sure your probe is actually selected to the uh, 20 times because, of course, you're using the uh, attenuator. Uh, so I'm just going to set... Uh, it's just as per the recommendations on the... Uh, uh, manual will set it for one millisecond per division and I'll just show you the trigger settings here I've got it set for a, a rising trigger um, and well, I'll just show you channel one of course and it's just about 40 volts right so when once the trigger maybe I'll offset that a wee bit it might make a bit more sense uh, there's the offset on the trigger and the voltage on the trigger just about 40 volts ish 
let's see what it looks like. So I'm just going to turn on the ignition, guys. So um, what do you expect to see? So let me just turn on the ignition here, guys. We'll go with the scope. I'm assuming we have a connection, which we don't, it appears. Uh, let me play with this. There we go. Now, does that make sense? Now that we have actually a decent connection at the, the back probing there. Does that make sense that that actually jumped up to battery voltage? Let's call it 12 volts. It does, right? Because what we're seeing here is the uh, the B plus actually coming down on the supply. It's supplied through. It's actually supplied through uh, one of the relays, but never mind that at the moment. So it comes through the battery uh, positive line here. And it's actually being supplied here. So we're actually, our probe is right here. That's why we're reading the battery supply at the moment. There is no ground being applied to it. So that's why we're reading 12 volts. I hope that makes sense. So the car is obviously running here, guys. Let me just uh, stop this. Let me just hold that image. I can turn the car off. You can see that this is why you might want to use an attenuator. Again, keep in mind, guys. 20 volts per division. In fact, let's measure it, right? Let's go with the horizontal cursor here. Let's bring the cursor down to zero, basically. And we'll bring the other one up to the peak. So that's 125 volts. I hope you can see the details there. Now, I'm not being dead accurate. There's no need to be. But I think you get the point about the attenuator, yeah? There is actually a... Um Part of the reason why I'm actually looking at this on the car now, guys, if uh, any of you actually watched the last video I pub published, I was trying to make it clear that when you use the uh, um, the injector test set that I showed you, that all-sun rig that I have, um, it really looked nothing like this. Um, in fact, um, this spike here was basically completely absent. I wanted to do it on the car to prove the point that this spike is one hell of a spike. Like I said, it's 125 volts, right? And if you want to risk your scope with 125 volts, go ahead. I'm not doing it. That's why I'm using the attenuator, right? Yes, it's extremely short duration. It may be fine, but my, I, I don't operate some. I don't operate on mic when it comes to my tooling that I just paid a couple hundred bucks for, right? So keep this in mind, guys. If you take nothing away from this video. Keep that in mind. So let me just adjust the scaling here a wee bit. Let's go a wee bit bigger. There, that's a wee bit nicer. So it's a wee bit, uh... So the pulse width here, guys, right? Again, this is a ground switched rig. So once we apply the ground here, this is where the injector is actually energized. Now there is a difference between on time and open time. They're two different things when it comes to an injector. Uh, perhaps that's a discussion for another day, but the on time is basically dictated by how long the ground is actually applied to the uh, to the injector. Now it would make sense. Does it make sense that the richer you want to go, the wider this pulse would get? Like typically, um, when you start the car, this starts off quite wide, and as the system starts to warm up, um, it starts to shrink the width of the uh, the injector. So that would be cold start enrichment. Does that make sense? I think so. Um, but again, the on time and the open time are two different things here, guys, right? So we have the uh, drop to ground, so the uh, field, magnetic field is formed, energized, pulling the pentel up. The ground is lifted at this point here, which, in which case the magnetic field collapses, hence the uh, um, self-induction spike. And you can see the energy dissipating over this timeline here, right? So you'll also notice this little artifact right here. Let me get one of the vertical cursors because maybe it'll be a bit easier to see. So uh, let me just go on to the beginning of the on time there. Again, that's on time, not open. I'm kind of using two different terms here. This is on and this is actually with reference to the open. That little hump right there is actually the disturbance in the magnetic uh, field. Um, let's call it the reluctance uh, the system actually has to offer as the mag as the a, a ferrous slug actually moves through the coil. There's a disruption in the magnetic field, and it's that 
pintle hump, they actually call it, that actually lets you know that the pintle is in fact actually moving. Can you dig, guys, that if you had um, um, the pintle was seized for whatever reason, corrosion, uh, contamination, whatever the case may be, and the pintle wasn't actually moving, the uh, you would still see this distinctive trace, yeah? However, it would be minus the pintle hump. So that little, what looks like an insignificant uh, artifact on the trace is actually extremely important. Make sure that that is there. Now, how do you, that's that's letting you know that the pentel has actually dropped so the injector is closed. Of course, the, the ground has been lifted at this point. How do you know it's open? Well, you don't. And that's where this comes in. You're gonna need a, a current trace in order to see um, the disruption in the current uh, ramp that you can also get um, if you happen to have a uh, current clamp, an amp clamp. So I was going to show you that, guys, but you know what? I think this is enough detail for one video. This is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this uh, image. In fact, I've saved it so that I can reference it in the future. Um, pictures. And there it is there. So I can actually go back to it and actually reference that. I should have probably got rid of the, uh, the cursors, but never mind. So I've saved that. We'll talk about this more in the future. We'll get into it more when we bring in the second channel and actually bring in the amp clamp and we can actually see the current hump because the current hump tells you a great deal of what's going on with the injector as well. Okay, I'll leave it at that for tonight, boys. I hope that makes sense. Cheers.